Welcome back for the final part of today's Capital Markets Day. We have three presentations as well as Andra's uh, summary and the Q&A at the end. And to start us off on this part two, we have George Georgiakopoulos, he's Global Head of Servicing, who will elaborate on one of Interim's main business areas. All yours. Here you go. Thank you, Emily. Good afternoon, everyone. I am uh, George. I am the Global Head of Servicing at Intrum. is a new role created in April this year to signify, uh, give the signal everywhere about our new strategic direction, i.e. with a strong focus on servicing. My job for the next three years is to do mainly two things. One is to grow our servicing revenues from what is today 10.6 billion, a leading anyway number in the industry, from 10.6 billion to about 15 billion or more, and double the profit of servicing. Today, EBIT of external servicing is about 2 billion euro, sorry, 2 billion sec, to make it 4 billion sec. What I will talk about today is our clients. But before I speak about the clients, I would like you to hear what our clients think of us, think of Intrum. In het eerste kwartaal van ieder jaar versturen we rond de 100.000 facturen waar klanten op reageren met vragen waar we dus hulp bij nodig hebben om al die vragen te kunnen, kunnen beantwoorden. En daarom hebben we Interim gekozen als partij die dat eerste lijns klantcontact doet. We hebben voor Interim gekozen omdat zij op grote schaal maatwerk kunnen leveren en voor de landelijke uitrol van de overchipkaart een betrouwbare partner zochten. Conozco a Intrum casi casi desde que empezamos eh, vendiendo carteras en el, en el 11, ¿no? Y la relación ha sido magnífica. Tiene un mare, la calidad humana de Intrum es espectacular, la verdad. Espectacular. Intrum houdt zeker eh, rekening met de situatie van de klant. Want ja, we, we zijn er niet om, om bedrijven kapot te maken. We zijn er om samen met het bedrijf tot een oplossing eh, te komen. Transync eh, vindt het natuurlijk belangrijk dat onbetaalde facturen betaald worden, maar niet ten koste van alles. Maar het is wel de bedoeling dat de reiziger achter de openstaande rekening gehoord wordt. En Interim biedt de ruimte ook om naar dat individu uh, te luisteren. We hebben korte lijntjes, uh, we spreken elkaar zeer regelmatig en iedereen weet elkaar goed te vinden. Dus we kijken uit om samen met Interim de samenwerking voort te zetten de komende jaren. Wat ook belangrijk is dat we elkaar als collega's zien. Het is niet Interim Amsterdam, het zijn onze collega's in Amsterdam. Antes, ¿no? Si hay algún problema que podamos gestionarlo, si pasa algo que podamos gestionarlo, eh, si surge alguna oportunidad que podamos ir juntos, eh, que estéis ahí, que estéis con nosotros. This is actually highly representative of the few of clients of Intrum for the services and the work we do with them and for them. We have uh, high client satisfaction indexes, and I will speak about them, higher renewal rates, higher conversion rates, and so on and so forth. We have quite a bit of data to support what you see here. Now, what I'm going to do today is uh, talk to you about how we are going to grow the business for what the level that it is today, 10.6 billion sec, to about 15 billion sec revenues, and how we're going to double our profits from 2 billion sec to 4 billion sec. In short, I'm going to describe to you that we have an excellent momentum already built in the business quarter two, quarter three, in terms of our commercial and sales development. So I will speak to you about the sales trends and the momentum we have in the commercial development. Secondly, I will speak about the client propositions we have today and how we are going to further grow the business by expanding those client propositions. And thirdly, I will focus more on increasing the profitability of our existing client base and contracts. I will speak about how we work on client profitability and what sort of results we expect. I will set the scene by describing where we are today as a servicing platform. But before I get into that, the core premise of what I am telling you today 
is that fundamentally Intrum is a very good company. Obviously, I believe this, and that's why I have decided to be with the company in the role of the global head of servicing. Importantly, though, our clients believe this. We'll discuss later and see the importance of the renewal rates that we have in the business, the client satisfaction we have in the business, the longevity of the contracts we have in the business. Hugely further important, the market overall believes that Intrum is a very good company. Evidence is the fact that when we go out there to win business, the win rate we have in the, in the tenders we participate, and I will show you in detail information about it, is more than 50%. We win most of the cases on the back of higher quality services. It is a sound foundation to do more and better with the business. Getting a bit to set for you the scene, before I get into sales, client propositions, growth of propositions, and profitability, set the scene a bit what today's platform looks like. Looks like the leading provider in the industry in Europe. It has a very, very substantive external ser uh, servicing revenue base of 10.6 billion. Importantly, though, in a market that it is very material. 60 to 80 billion we calculate the addressable market to be, and we have about 10.6 billion. The 60 billion, 60 to 80 billion, is the market of existing revenue base, of existing outsourced type activities that we service as well. If you want to consider how much major organizations, banks, telecoms, but smaller SMEs keep and they do themselves, credit management themselves, at least at early stages, this market here is a substantially, substantially bigger market. I will get back to it because with the new propositions we are thinking, certainly we go to get market share here, but we think we can unlock untapped markets as well. The servicing EBIT, we call it adjusted EBIT here, is the profit, is the best profit uh, proxy we could have for servicing. It is 2.4 billion SEC, out of which about 2 billion SEC is external servicing. Intrum has a very large client base, 80,000 euro. I will speak a bit, bit more about <coughs> the revenues to, to give you the right feel about the revenues and the clients going, on, going forward. But it is a very large base, hugely important for the further growth of the company. Because obviously we do, and we intend to intensify that, do more, more business with existing clients as well. The position in the majority of our franchise markets is leadership. I spoke about the revenues, 10.6 billion revenue. I wanted to bring a bit closer and connect revenues to clients, client types, and geographical markets that we operate in, what we call the regions. We have a good distribution. First of all, we have a good distribution in the sense that out of the 10.6 billion, half of the business, half of the revenue, is with a select 15 clients. That's a big advantage. And a big advantage for Intrum, I will speak about it. But we have a very large revenue base, half a billion, to many more clients, giving a fair amount of diversification. Importantly, we have presence across the three markets, slightly different, but the substance of it is substantive books of clients in all of them, and very large numbers of end customers. This is about 26 million customers. Uh, Andres and Annette spoke about the impact we make on society, we handle in Europe 26 million customers as we speak external servicing at this point in time. A big impact on uh, society. And obviously we are, highly, we are highly conscious of that and that, uh, take it into account and we do the best for customers as well. Back into clients for a minute. We have highly diversified among industries customer client base in Northern Europe, in Middle Europe, we are more concentrated in banking in Southern Europe because mainly this is how the industry 
uh, developed. Now, we do half of our business, our revenue at Intrum, about 5 billion sec, with 15 top clients, and two thirds of the revenue with about 50 clients, five zero clients. This is a significant advantage for Intrum going forward. Because this revenue, in reality, is recurring revenue, is the, what I would call it more commercially sticky type of revenue, recurring, you can count on it year after year after year. Why? Because those clients have very, very high satisfaction scores, satisfaction rates. They stay with us for very long. Average relationship in the top clientele is 15 years or more. The contract renewal rate, when eventually they come to renewal, is 85%. Contract length going forward <coughs> is over three years. Is a base on which Intrum can and will build its revenue base going forward. Now, these are things that we have directly from clients. They are logged as comments into our uh, annual surveys. We do them and we log them into Salesforce, our, our tool to manage sales. This is what they say about Intrum. I would like to give you a few seconds to read them. Consistently, our clients, either when at the tenders we win them, or when they give us feedback month after month, year after year, they say pretty much the same things. That way, that's why consistently we have those high satisfaction, client satisfaction rates. They say, Intrum is a highly professional company, manages the relationship very well, hugely important for the clients, and they state it, Intrum understands the industry I am in. They understand my business and they add value to my business. How do those now positives, market leader, clientele translate into sales? And importantly, how is the momentum, the commercial momentum and the sales momentum at the company at this point in time? On the left side, we show here the pipeline of deals we have. The metric that we use is the so-called annual contract value, meaning when I sign a contract, what's the revenue annually I expect from that contract. The pipeline that we have at this point in time is the largest in living memory. It is 2.6 billion sec. This is, by the way, all we have in history since we implemented Salesforce. So from 2.2, 2.1, now 2.6 is the largest. But in the team I work with, we have people who have been with Intrum for 10 years, for 15 years in commercial roles. They all state the same. It's the highest pipeline I ever remember in terms of contracts in the company. We are in a good place. We generate excellent, very strong pipeline. Once you have the pipeline, you need to convert the pipeline into actual contracts to sign them. Our signing rates for the last three years, 21, 22, 23, are in a very good place and actually with an improving trend. Broadly, for any new tender, any new deal we are bidding for, we are winning one out of two. Statistically, actually a bit more. If you take into account clients that we have existing business with, the win rate totally is in the range of 56% at this point in time. It's very strong win rate. Why? Because they appreciate what Intrum does for them, the service we give them, the understanding of the business, understanding of the industry, their industry. Now, how do those convert eventually into annual contract value, i.e. total sales per year? This year, the conclusion is we expect the strongest performance in living, in living memory. We expect this year annual contract value, signed contracts in the range of 1.4 billion sec. Two years ago, we had half that, 0.7 billion sec. 
once you sign the contracts. It takes some time for the volumes to come through, be implemented, and mature. So you don't see them in most cases from day one to day two, but it's a matter of quarters, but you see them. Last year, we had contracts in the range of 1.1. Now we're at 1.4. Importantly, we are managing now ever more precisely and intensively the churn in the business, because naturally you lose some clients. Last year, the net business, after we lost 400 million last year, a couple of main contracts, a um, couple, of, couple of geographies, but after we lost uh, 400 last year, the net business last year was 0 0.7 billion sec. Business we wrote last year to be implemented this year and next year. The net business this year, we expect it to be at 1.3 billion sec, sort of double what we wrote last year. In short, is very, very good momentum. Proof that our focus works in combination with the tremendous assets that we have in the markets, which is our people, our relationships with clients, and so on. I will speak a bit more about it. A natural, I think, normal question to be asked when somebody sees that kind of uh, momentum in sales is whether this is done as a trade-off and possibly to the detriment of margin. So a fair question is, when you do all this and you go from 1.1 to 1.4, and actually you have not lost any business, in reality you have doubled the net business year on year, what's happened to the margin of the new signings? The answer is it's actually higher than the stock margin. So here I have the stock margin, numbers that the market yourselves and the broader public has seen from our financial statements. We operated in middle Europe last year in 22 at 16 percent service level margin, sorry, service line margin. This year we are writing the contracts, we are writing at 26 percent, almost 10 percent higher, the new contracts. Last year in uh, northern Europe we had margins of 20 percent, stock business reported. This year in Northern Europe, we are signing contracts and the new signings are at 35% and more. So in short, what we have done is a lot more business, a lot more origination this year, a lot more business that we write this year at significantly higher margins. How is this miracle happening? And how sustainable it is? I believe that it is happening because we really utilize via the focus the commercial assets that we have, which is clients, our branding, our access in the industry, and the reputation that we have in the market. Now, a very fair question is how sustainable that is. Our premise, our view, and my strong belief is that it is very sustainable for two or three significant reasons. Reason number one, <coughs> at the end of the day, with 10 billion revenue that we have, we participate in a huge market. There is room to grow. The market is 60, 80 billion, and if you take the potential for insourced uh, to go out, is even higher. The second is that in a key client segment, which is banking, we have more and more of an advantage driven by the implementation of the NPL directive. Smaller competitors who offer servicing to banks, they need to get to the same standard of operation as we are and we operate globally anyway, which makes them a bit less competitive. The third one is what we describe here, is that we have set up over the last couple of years, this year really maturing and really firing on all cylinders, but we have set up a very strong commercial organization that can originate at scale, and it does it. We have 170 salespeople across our markets. We have central coordination of those 170 people. We have sales tool, actually we use Salesforce to coordinate our sales across the platform. We have set standards and margin rates 
at which deals can be signed, any deal that is signed today at Intrum, needs to go through an assessment, and we have to see that we believe that the margin goes above a given level we have set per market. I to be profitable enough, but obviously to remain competitive. We have sales tools and sales practices that we learn from each other. The combination of the above is what I describe a strong sales organization. I believe we can and we will continue delivering excellent performance, commercial performance in the years to come. I have spoken about sales as the first part and the first driver for the growth of the business. The second one is client propositions. I will start describing briefly what we have today and what we do today and how much further we can expand and we can go on. The propositions we have in the market, or if I call it the proposition we have in the market for servicing, is the broadest and deepest. No competitor, <coughs> I believe, can do what we do at that scale, that width, that breadth, and that depth. We cover from performing loans, not in all markets, but we cover from performing loans, and not in all markets the same, from performing loans to unlikely to pay loans. These are stage two loans that Andres showed earlier. There is a huge universe in uh, Europe, unlikely to pay, invoicing, uh, digital collection, unsecured collection, in all our markets actually, uh, being the leader, secured collection, certainly the leader in the south, big participant elsewhere, and real estate services. From that point on, how can development of client propositions help Intrum to grow? In two ways. The first one is we would take and we will take offerings that we have, existing offerings that we have in some of our markets, where it makes sense, expand them in other markets. I have here as an illustrative example the unlikely to pay proposition, which means stage two loans in reality, and the secured collection proposition. In Southern Europe, we are genuine leaders in this kind of activity. We run between Italy and Greece securitized vehicles with state guarantees, by the way, a very complex type of operation to run, in the range of 35 billion gross book value, massive books, extremely high quality expertise. Our expectation is, as regulation is pushing banks around Europe via provisioning and overall pressure to deconsolidate, they will need solutions to start derecognizing assets. This is where our expertise, and it is true deep expertise, will come very handy. We expect high demand and will be there to serve that demand. Same goes for secured, same, same goes for unlikely to pay. Andres said earlier that out of the 25 banks, top 25 banks in Europe, 23 are clients of Intrum. Not all 23 have those propositions today. The simple intent is we go and we talk to them and we have started talking to them to see how we can assist them. And there is plenty of room to expand. The second one, as an illustrative example, type proposition, is areas where today we know that we do not have necessarily surely in all markets, best-in-class proposition. The secured, I said earlier, the same goes for real estate, by the way, the secured UTP, secured NPL, uh, sorry, UTP, secured NPL and real estate, truly we have best-in-class propositions. Now is another picture where we have propositions and segments that we are not best-in-class. We know it. We acknowledge it, and I will tell you what we do about it. I have as examples here digital collection, and invoicing services. We do them in some markets today. We want to be best in class in them. This is where, from a commercial perspective, Annette spoke earlier about how Ophelos, for example, 
would be an important component for Intrum in the managing the cost of uh, collection fundamentally and modernizing overall the operation, I will give you the commercial perspective. And it is the following. Today in digital collection, we participate possibly in some tenders, not necessarily in all of them. There are cases where clients have very high volume of claims, typically unsecured, but very small amounts. <coughs> the collection effort that has to go into it has to be adjusted to what the potential return is, i.e. very small. You need tools, you need collection engine and capability to service those kind of markets. We do them sort of thing today, but not optimally. The immediate effect with the Ophelos coming into the picture is we'll start bidding for contracts and businesses and clients that so far we have not been able to service to the level we would like to and win those contracts. But over and above, the I can give you an example of a second market that we could untap. Today, there are major companies, telecoms, utilities across Europe, that they have that kind of claims at a very early stage. Typically, they do not outsource to the like of us those claims. They do them in-house. With an Ophelos, and I will speak about e-collect as well, the invoicing capability, would be able to go and start untapping those markets that today are not even outsourced and we'll find the right commercial formula to untap the markets. Similarly, it goes for the invoicing services. Let me tell you a bit what they are in case that you don't have it top of your head, unless you have it. <laughs> and the invoicing services are second nature to you, so I don't speak about them, but in case that it is not the case. <laughs> I'm a banker by training, by the way, myself. My whole career was in banking, so invoicing is new to me, but I think it's very exciting, because what it does is the following. Major clients, think of big telecoms, utility companies, what they do is they want to get away from the billing problem, produce invoices, send them to clients, uh, get the payment. So they outsource and they are seeking to outsource in particularly in the northern region where we are now to outsource the invoicing. So they want to send you the data, the billing data, and somebody, this somebody will be us now with that we have a collect. We take the data, we produce invoices, they go into an app, clients see it, start paying from the app. The huge percentage just pay. Whatever it does not pay, and we get remunerated as interim for our services when we provide that service. What is not paid becomes delinquent account and naturally comes into our decision and collection engine and we start collecting on it. Therefore, via both components and upgrading our capability, what we will do pretty quickly is start bidding for contracts we don't have today and start getting into client relationships even deeper, even better. Those with a great degree actually of conservatism have been incorporated into the growth plan. Now, the third element of doubling the profit from two billion to four billion. I spoke about sales, we have the momentum. Client propositions, we certainly have the momentum. We just announced our investment in upgrading our capability. Third one is client profitability. I spoke when I spoke about sales, about how you set standards and manage the mix of the contracts in a way to increase profitability on the new contracts. And actually this is the new signings of the year that happened to be the record signings in living memory. But we have a 10, but this would be 1 billion uh, revenue next year, the year after. What about the other 10 billion revenue that we already have? How do I optimize that 1 billion revenue to make it more profitable? The stock. And the answer is we work on what we have called client profitability tools. Every company wants client profitability tools. I have worked for many. We all wanted client profitability tools. But when we started in previous lives, you had issues to deal with. The data, the consistency, the methodology, the impact, and so on and so forth. We have cracked those at Intrum at this point in time. We have developed tools 
having cleaned data, developed consistent methodologies for measurement across markets, and having uh, fi found the right accounting ways to allocate all types of costs. We have tools implemented in a number of our markets, expect to almost all of our markets by the year end, that we take the 130 million actions that, uh, and interactions that uh, Annette spoke about earlier, we allocate them into the accounts, we allocate into the accounts with consistent methodologies other indirect costs, and we end up with a profitability. Now, there is a percentage in this customer ba client base and all client bases that is non-profitable. So what do you do then? What we do then is we review the collection strategies because we have in the profitability tools, action per action, all the actions we have done on the account. We review the profitability, we review the collection actions and strategies and we optimize them. Sometimes you find out that you better optimize your fixed costs as well. Rarely you find out, but you do, that it is an issue of pricing with a client. So you need to have a fair commercial discussion with that client so you can continue servicing that client successfully. But the outcome is that slowly but surely, out of a 10 billion revenue, you start optimizing your revenues, your profitability per client, granularly, specifically, and uh, with evidence. The 2 billion profit that we do, from that action only, next year, we should give us the actions we have planned to do, a run rate of boost in the profitability in the range of 200 to 400 million sec. This is 10 to 20 percent profit increase from that specific action only. Combine this with what I said about the new contracts, is what we say, and it is our motto, more business with more clients in a more profitable way. Now, the growth, I said where it will come from. And Andres said in the morning, Michael will speak more about it, is 10% aggregate growth rate in our revenue. That's the expectation. And double the profit in three years. When you break it down, I said where it will come from. It will come from the sales momentum we have seen, from the sales structure, we have discussed it. It will come from the new propositions and client account profitability measurement and adjustment. Now, how does it look revenue per geography, revenue growth per geography? Firstly, we expect to have revenue growth in all our regions. And uh, in the north, which is a very mature market, and uh, the south, we think that will be about 5% most likely a little bit uh, around it, you know, maybe uh, a few base points below, but le we, we expect a 5% growth rate in those markets. We expect more growth rate in the middle. Let me comment on the three geographies for a minute. The south, which we have a growth in the three years, so this is 22, this is 26, so we expect to grow in the three years. We have an extremely strong position in market share today. In uh, Greece, we have pretty much one third of the market, but the assets have been uh, divided. There are three big services, they have the assets. In Spain, after the AIA transaction, we are managing 210, let's say more than 200,000 real estate assets, most likely the biggest service in Europe, fully managing, including sales, maintenance, etc., of the assets. And in Italy, we already have big position, big carve-out done with one of the major banks in TESA, and uh, a fair amount, a very strong amount, actually, and market share of whatever new comes to the market. So the market position in those three is already extremely strong. The priority from that point is to maintain it. We think, actually, with specific actions that we have, mostly inorganic actions, sorry, mostly organic actions, organic actions, we can achieve a 5% growth rate. In uh, Northern Europe, we have the expectation of growth, the 5% annually, driven mostly by the new propositions. The new propositions of invoicing and digital servicing, digital collection as we call it, apply mostly in or immediately in uh, that uh, region. 
Then we have doubling, but not from the very high base in view of the market sizes and the NPL sizes and the company size and the client sizes growth. This is from the middle. For us, the middle is the major markets of the UK, France, Germany, the Netherlands. We have done groundwork on them already. There is excellent regional management. Alberto Maron actually has taken over as the regional manager. We have senior and highly competent uh, managing directors in all our markets. In the UK, we have done the merger with uh, uh, Arrow and uh, we have got a new team combined with the existing team, best in class, we believe. In France, we have new managing director one year now <coughs> and we already see strong and important performance. In Germany, we have very experienced team doing the transition from servicing as a captive servi servicer uh, uh, interims investments to being a lot more out there commercially and doing a lot more third client, third party servicing. We have done the work with the team. We have propositions that are coming to those markets. Digital will be very relevant. Invoicing will be relevant in some of them. All the trends that we see are positive. They are in the right direction and uh, we believe in them. This is where our 15% is coming from. Now, additionally in Middle Europe, mostly in the UK, but not only, Germany, we want a big contract as well, has a lot of BPO, business process outsourcing contracts to the market, already are out there and we're bidding for them. Already we have won one, we won one last year, we're still implementing and therefore we'll see the revenues ongoing. And we think there will be a lot more of those large material contracts in the UK market. Take all together the green shoots in France, the sound business we already have in Switzerland, what we have done in, uh, and will do in Germany, the UK, I think, very well justifies, together with the management structure we have put in place, justifies the expected uh, growth. Now, the financials of the business, I uh, talked a bit about them on a couple of occasions, Andres did as well. We're looking to get the 10.6 billion, more than 15 billion. This is a 10% annual growth rate. And the 2 billion, actually out of the 2.4 billion, 2 billion is external, the 2 billion external to become 4. The 0 0.3 that is here, 0 0.4 is internal. So double the external profit, servicing profit, and increase at 10% yearly growth the next three years, uh, our servicing revenue. Now, I have spoken to wrap it up and uh, made the following argument. We start from a very strong position with recurring basis, happy clients, we can build ver further on this. Our sales momentum is very encouraging. We have made steps towards upgrading our proposition to the market. Uh, we announced uh, digital and invoicing capabilities. They will come to the market with effect I said. And lastly, uh, very good work on uh, profitability that we'll see the results starting next year as well. That's it from me. Thank you for listening. And uh, Emily, if we have any kind questions, I'm happy to Leave take the them. Leave the baton over. Thank you. I don't have invoicing on top of mind either, so I'm happy you're here to help out. Uh, I'd like to ask you first, you have the smallest market share in Middle Europe, as you said, Germany, UK, France. Why is that? Is fierce competition? It is smaller in terms uh, comparative to what we have in Southern Europe, but it is still a uh, substantive market share. So we are players in uh, France, surely in Switzerland, in uh, the UK, we are now the number two servicer and so on and so forth. So we are a player. Andres said we'll become the leader. I think this is what we aspire here. And uh, Johan actually asked this question two hours ago, but since it's important, I'm, I'll take it again. What makes you confident in hitting a 10% growth rate in external servicing revenues? Taking out acquisitions and uh, currency effect, growth has been close to zero over the last couple of years. What I described, the sales momentum, the new propositions, and the profitability work we are doing. And uh, the fact that we're not doing this in a vacuum. 
We're doing this with clients who like Intrum, trust Intrum, do more and more business with us. And Rickard wants to know, can you explain, please explain why margins on existing contracts in servicing is falling? Driven by the cost base primarily, which is uh, well known to the market. It has uh, gone uh, not the way we wanted as a, as a result of uh, the one Intrum uh, primarily. Andres has said, Michael will uh, confirm and reconfirm. We are doing well on the cost program and this would stabilize. Victoria wants to know, what is the contract renewal rate for top 50 clients? Is in the range of uh, 80%. 80-90% typically they, they are for the top 50. And putting that into context, is that outstanding in the sector or is that good? I or think it's outstanding in any sector. <laughs> it is a very, very high... <laughs> <laughs> there are not many... I mean, I, if you are BMW, and I love BMW, <laughs> you do not have uh, contracts uh, and orders for the next 10 years. You have much shorter. We are different. The top two or three contracts that we have actually were the big securitized vehicles that we are servicing. They have another 10 years to go. It is very, very stable type uh, revenue. Also going you back have to perform for clients day in, day out. Don't get me wrong. You have to perform. But this is what we do for a living and we continue performing. You also said that 50% uh, of your external revenues come from 15 clients. That Correct. sounds like quite a small group. Is that risky to be dependent on few? I attempted to make the argument that actually it is a positive because it means at the end of the day rather low risk in reality in view of the high renewal rate, the high client satisfaction, uh, the um, uh, average length with us which is typically 15 years or more and so on and so forth. It is a positive for interim. Think of it this way. You have to put some farmers deal with them. We use those pedestrian expressions in commercial activities, farmers, hunters and the likes, but you put some people who manage those accounts, but you do not have to chase huge amount of contracts that you need a sales force 10 times the size to go and chase them. And you need huge operational effort to go and implement them. There's a big advantage for the company. On the slide of uh, annual growth from 2022 to 2026, uh, it showed for Northern and Southern Europe, it showed 5% or less. You kind of alluded to it that it's not, we're not talking 1%, we're talking closer to five. Yes, we do. Because when you see the difference between the growth you expect from Middle Europe, uh, the um, impression could be that mainly all your growth is going to within this, this um, business area is gonna come from Middle Europe. You've taken away my <laughs> pointer. Do you want it back? <laughs> well, in absolute numbers, there's a lot of growth coming from this and this combined is pretty much similar to this or a bit less. So in terms of absolute numbers, let's say a bit more than half would come from the middle for the good reasons that we said. The aggregate growth rates are the way we describe them and we show them. That all said, again, the size of that market the size of the stage two of that market, which is about four or five times the size of Southern Europe. Andres showed it in, in uh, his part. The work we have done in terms of putting a strong team together, the new propositions we are doing, we are <coughs> comfortable about what we show to the market. In the beginning of your presentation, you showed that you estimate an addressable market of 60 to 80 billion Swedish kroner. How do you reach that interval? public information, taking uh, statements, financial statements of all sorts of competitors with our own adjusting and interpreting. That's why we have a range, 60 to uh, 80. But let me say that, um, uh, which I think I, I mentioned probably in my presentation, is that this is the already outsourced business that we and our sector is managing. There is a huge other part <coughs> that they do at early stages our clients themselves for a number of reasons. With our new technology type of invoicing and with our new technology type of uh, digital collecting, which is very easy, low touch kind of activity that can even be branded by the name of the client, we think that we can start unlocking well beyond the 60 to 80 billion revenues. 
I think it's time for to let you go, George, because you're going to be back during the Q&A as well.